All right, so the first video is for problem number one on the practice final. Uh, so problem number one, let's go through A. Okay, so identify elements A, B, and C. So 1S2, 2S2, 2P2, that would make element A equals carbon. 1S1, that would make element B equal to hydrogen. And 1S2, 2S2, 2P4, there is a typo on yours, so it should be 2P4. Um, 2P4 is consistent with oxygen. Okay. Given the mass percentage, determine the formula for the unknown compound. So that's gonna be in B. So we can always assume a 100 gram sample. And if we assume a 100 gram sample, that is gonna mean that the percentages are grams. So let's go ahead and convert each to moles, grams to moles, divide by the smallest. So let's go ahead and convert the first one to moles. So in this case, we have carbon. Okay. We know that carbon is 12 grams per every one mole. And in this case, we have a percentage of 37.484. 37.484 grams per every x moles. So I'm gonna get out my calculator here and I'm gonna cross multiply. And when I cross multiply, I'm gonna get 37.484 divided by 12. And it said error because that's ghetto. So then I'm gonna say 37.484 divided by 12 equals 3.12. So that is 3.12 moles of carbon. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for hydrogen. We know that hydrogen's molar mass is one gram per every one mole. And in this case, I have 12.583 grams, 12.583 grams per every X moles. And in this case, we can look at it just logically and know that that's gonna be 12.583 moles. And when I go on to the next one, it's for oxygen. I know that oxygen's molar mass is 16 grams per every one mole. And in this case, I have 49.933, 49.933 grams per every x moles. So I go 49.933 divided by 16, and that's gonna be 3.12. So I have 3.12 moles of oxygen. And that is actually equal to the, um, uh, the formula, but we wanna divide by the smallest. So 3.12, that's gonna be one. 3.12, that's gonna be four. And 3.12, that's gonna be one. So the formula for the compound, when we bring this all together, is C1H4O1. And that's gonna be the formula for the unknown compound. And we're gonna use that throughout in this problem. Okay, when you go on to problem C, and I'm gonna go ahead and erase here. Let's get up. Let me use my shirt. Oh my gosh, my wife is gonna kill me. Okay, there you go. Yeah. In C, we know that an ionic compound is when you have one element, let's say X, fully give its electron to Y, and we are left with X plus and Y. Minus, and in this we need something who is a giver and something who is a taker. And if we look at CH4O, carbon can be a giver or a taker, but we're going to assume in this case that it's a taker. Carbon, um, and that's carbon tends to be a taker. I know I never really did a good job explaining that to you, so always assume carbon's a taker. Hydrogen we know is a taker, wants to be like helium, and oxygen is a taker. So they're gonna play tug of war on those electrons the whole time. And in doing so, they're gonna form a covalent bond. Okay. All.
takers of valence electrons. Okay. If we look at D, provide the Lewis structure for the unknown compound. Okay, so the electrons that they want, carbon wants A, hydrogen wants 2 times 4, that's A, and oxygen wants A. What do they have? Okay, well, carbon has 4, oxygen has 1, 4 times 1 is 4, I mean hydrogen, and oxygen has 6. And then we're going to divide this whole thing by 2. So in this case, we have 24 minus 8 plus 6, which is 14 divided by 2. That is 5 covalent bonds. And there's a lot of different ways you can draw it. The best way to draw it is one in which carbon has the bonds that it is supposed to have. That's 4 and oxygen has the bonds that it is supposed to have. Um, but there are, like I said, there are a myriad of other ways of drawing it. You could have a lone pair on carbon and the oxygen. Um, but again, if, if we do it right, um, we really want to end up as close to as possible with the number of bonds it's supposed to have. So in this case, we know that carbon is supposed to have we know that carbon is supposed to have four bonds and oxygen is supposed to have two bonds. Um, and we can go ahead and look here at the molecular geometry, which gets into question E. So let me go ahead and just answer E right here, guys. There's a lot of old quizzes in there and stuff. I apologize about that. Go ahead and dig through there. Um, I should have given those back to you. My bad. So, uh, in this case, we know that this is a tetrahedral center because the carbon is surrounded by four bonds. And if we look at this one specifically, we know that that is bent. And it's bent because oxygen is surrounded by only two bonds and one lone pair. Um, so, we're not going to look at the geometry of hydrogens on the outside because the definition of a central atom that has geometry is one that's in the middle of at least two atoms. Uh, so that is D. I'm going to get super ghetto here and erase it with my shirt. Once again, oh, that was E. I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to go here to F. Draw a picture that shows and labels all intermolecular forces that would occur if a water molecule is mixed with another one. So we're going to use the unknown compound that I did, and this is ask, asking for intermolecular forces. So first off, we see this molecule is polar. Um, oxygen is pulling harder than hydrogen, and oxygen is pulling harder than carbon. We know that the hydrogens on the outside are irrelevant, and that's really going to make this hydrogen here partially positive. So if we put a water there next to it, are you guys okay finding stuff? Do you have any questions? Yeah, I do. Okay. Is that a good time? Yeah, sure, why not? So we have the interaction right there, and it asked us to label that IMF, and that IMF is called a dipole to dipole IMF, and that is because here we have a covalent bond that's polar with these dipoles or differential pulling on electrons, and here we have a covalent bond that's polar with that differential pulling on electrons. I'm going to be moving into the next part in the next video.